Welcome to our reflection today. Today is the Tuesday of week 11 in Ordinary Time Year A. We remember always that God is with us. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue to read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Jesus said to his disciples, You have learned how it was said, You must love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say this to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In this way, you will be sons of your father in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on bad men as well as good, and his reign to fall on honest and dishonest men alike. For if you love those who love you, what right have you to claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much, do they not? And if you save your greetings for your brothers, are you doing anything exceptional? Even the pagans do as much, do they not? You must therefore be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. In this Gospel, Jesus continues to share what it means to love one another in the image and likeness of God. We heard in the gospel a very clear message with no exception. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. It's easy to be nice to those people who are nice to you. But how do we respond when someone is unfriendly toward us? Now, not only are we called to respond to this in our human world, but I'm particularly attuned to this in our digital world. As I scroll sometimes through the internet and on social media sites, sifting occasionally through the comments and posts, I'm really saddened by some of the uncharitable and unloving comments that I read. It seems that the courtesies we afford each other face-to-face do not extend to the digital space. And yet I see Jesus' words and message of this gospel so applicable in that space. So, for example, if I see a comment that I don't agree with, or has particularly angered or offended me, if I choose to respond to that comment, how how do I respond? What are the words that I use? And what is the tone that I convey? Like I would try to see God in the person in front of me, should it be a face-to-face situation? The person behind a comment or a post is also a person and is also loved by God. So my challenge in that situation is to see the face of God in the person behind that post. The last line particularly of today's gospel captured my attention. It said, you must therefore be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. (laughs) I'm thinking, what a line, my goodness. Am I to be perfect just as God is perfect? Like no pressure whatsoever. But upon reading that uh, some commentaries um, on this Bible passage, the word perfect in today's meaning in today's language, doesn't have the same meaning or definition as the original text. The word perfect in Matthew's gospel comes from the Greek word teleos, and apologies for pronouncing that incorrectly, but teleos, which translates to fully grown or whole. It insinuates maturity. So when I apply it to this gospel, I hear Jesus saying that we must be whole in God and mature in our life and faith. And this is achieved by accepting the invitation to live in the way that Jesus is sharing with us. Now, I don't think it's something we will achieve necessarily in this life, as I know I'm always maturing and discovering more and more about life and faith all the time. But I hope in the discovery and and trying to live it, that I'm doing so in a way that lives and breathes life in its wholeness as God asks of us. And that is loving others face-to-face and in the digital world, our friends and our enemies and forgiving others, especially when we find it difficult to forgive, so as to reflect God's unconditional love. So God, this week I pray that we can become whole in you, listening to your word and living it through our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.